Hey guys, Michael here. So Thursday nights we play games at our household and I wanted to make a new dice tower when we play Yahtzee. This P2 came with some clear acrylic. So what I wanna do is make a dice tower out of clear acrylic. I think that'd look pretty cool being able to see the dice fall down into the tower when you try to score that Yahtzee. Stick with me, let's get to it. Okay, so before I get started, I need to clear out my tray with all the previous cuttings I did on some tests I did recently. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the slats here. And I have some isopropyl alcohol and a rag. I'm just gonna spray it on here. And I can just wipe the tops of these down. And when you do that, you can see the, the junk starts coming off. So it takes a little bit of time to wipe this off. I find that vinegar actually works better than isopropyl alcohol, but either way, you gotta keep these clean if you wanna keep your material clean when you're cutting or engraving on it. Now that I've cleaned the slats, let me empty out the tray. This is my clear acrylic I'm going to use. So what I want to do is put my slats a little bit closer together. That way it holds the pieces up as it cuts them. I think that'll work fine. Go ahead and peel the paper off. Okay, I don't know how to make a dice tower, so I went to this website called 3axis.co and here you can find a lot of free vector files you can use for cutting. I'm gonna come over here and do a search for dice tower. And I've already done this before, but I found that I actually wanna make this one right here. And when you click on it, it gives you the ability to download it. Now this one is an Adobe Illustrator file. I don't want this one. I want the DXF version. So I'm gonna come over here and find the DXF file. Click on it, download it, and it's gonna save it to your computer. Once downloaded, you can come over to XCS and up here at the top left, you can select image and I'm gonna import the image. So I'm gonna go to the downloads, select my file and open it. Now this is the dice tower I want to make. But before I get started, I want to make sure it fits my piece of acrylic. So I'm gonna have to move this around to make sure it fits on one sheet of acrylic. My acrylic is 11.75 square. So I'm gonna draw a square in here. So I'm gonna say insert rectangle, drop it down here. Right now at the top, I'm in millimeters. I wanna change it to inches. So I can go to settings and change it to inches right here. Now I'm in inches. So I'm gonna select this and type in 11.75, hit enter, and then as you can see here, when it's selected, you can see 11.75, but it's not 11.75 square. So to change this without changing this one, I can unclick the padlock, zoom out by holding my control key and my mouse wheel. That way I can see the entire square and I didn't need to zoom out to resize it, but I want to see it. So I'm going to type 11.75, hit enter. Now this is my acrylic. The next thing I want to do is fit all these pieces inside this acrylic, making sure they do not overlap. And what I can see right here is as I'm moving these around, one thing I can see is this piece is separate from this piece. I'm going to select all of these and group them into one piece. So I'm going to right click and say group. Now when I move it, it's one piece and these won't get separated. I'm going to do the same thing with this right here. These two pieces, these three pieces and this one large piece. Let me make sure they are selected. Yes. Right click group. And now I can move them around 
as a single piece. And again, what I want to do is take full advantage of this sheet of acrylic, make sure I can fit it all at one time. Try that over here. It's like playing, playing Tetris here. And I know these fit because I've done it once before, but it was not on film. So uh, bear with me as I figure this out. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. I'm going to click 90 and move it. And then I'm going to take this one, move him here, move this one here, zoom out, almost done. Click on this guy, we'll move him over here. This guy will move him right here. Uh, let me move this one up. A, oops. Undo that. Click on that one only. Move him up. And last, put this one right here. Now I can zoom out by holding the control key and using your mouse wheel. You can zoom in and out of XCS. Now that I can see it's all here, I'm going to move it and put it on top of the working area of the P2. The next thing I need to do is connect the P2 by turning it on and waiting for this connect. Because I've already connected before, this should automatically reconnect once the P2 gets powered up. All right, so it just connected. As you can see, it's refreshing the, the background image. It refreshed successful. So before I go any further, let me make sure I'm in the right mode. I'm in laser flat mode. This is the mode you wanna use when you're on top of the knives. So I have my material on top, so I'm gonna leave it in laser flat. With that in place and set up, I'm going to uh, enter the thickness of the material. I could use the measurement feature, but I'm gonna go ahead and type it in. So I'm gonna type three and hit enter. Oops, let's do the, oh, it is three, but it's in inches. Let me switch it back to millimeters. You have to do a lot of switching back and forth sometimes. All right, let me set back to three millimeters. There we go. And let me capture the close view, which is capture the top left of that acrylic to make sure all this fits on there. So I'm gonna click this and it's gonna use the up close camera to take a picture of that top left corner of the acrylic. All right, now, before I go any further, let me select everything and I'm just gonna group it just because I don't wanna miss and, and not grab everything at the same time. I'm gonna zoom in by holding down control using the mouse wheel. Acrylic is hard to see, well, clear acrylic that is. And you can see there's the edge of the acrylic. So what I wanna do is make this line at the edge of the acrylic or about as close as I can because I drew this the same size as the acrylic. Okay, so after some trial and error, I finally found the sweet spot of where this acrylic needs to be inside the P2 so that it fits that entire sheet of acrylic. I can double check that one more time by selecting the top left corner. Using the capture close view, I'm gonna zoom in and see, yes, I'm still inside that acrylic. Now, the next thing I wanna do is ungroup this, select it, right click, ungroup, and then I'm just gonna delete this outside line. I don't need it anymore. I'm almost ready to go. Let me just select my material, change it over here to the right to cut, set the power to 60, and set the speed to 10 millimeters per second. That's what I found works best for me on clear acrylic, and this is three millimeter clear acrylic. Double checking everything, select it all. I'm on cut, 60, 10, three millimeter thick. I've already sized it, so I'm going to hit process it's gonna give me a preview of what it's going to cut out. Then I'm gonna hit process and it's ready to go. So as you see down here, this is the estimated time. It says it's gonna take about seven minutes to complete. I'm gonna click process. It's ready to go. It's asking me to press the button on the device to start. I'm gonna press the big circle and we'll get started cutting.
Okay, it's all finished up. This estimated seven minutes, 22 seconds. The actual time was six minutes, 53 seconds. Click OK and you are finished. You can save your project or close your project, whatever you want to do inside XES. Let's take a look at the cutting. Okay, so I have all my pieces cut out. It's amazing how these look and so clean looking um, on the P2. But I do want to point out a mistake I made and hopefully you don't make this in the future. On the slats, when I had them laid out, I didn't plan it, I didn't plan it right with this piece. I just guesstimated it and put them down. And this piece right here was only on one slat. And it was enough so that when it finished cutting, it fell, hit something, and rolled underneath one of these other pieces that was still yet to cut. So then when it cut this piece, it actually went all the way down to the tray and hit this piece. So this piece does have a little bit of marks on there from the laser. Not the end of the world, but it's not going to be a perfectly clear uh, dice tower. So the next thing is, how do I put this together? I'm going to try some blue painter's tape to sort of hold some of it together while I glue the other parts and I have a little square to kind of keep it straight. And uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay, I got it all finished up. I'll tell you what, this was a lot harder than I thought when it comes to assembling because the super glue wanted to just get everywhere and get on my fingers and accidentally get on the clear acrylic. I did use a accelerant to speed up the drying process. Who knows how long this will last because it's CA on acrylic and I don't know if that's a good combination. Well, anyway, happy the way it came out. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time. Let's see if I get a Yahtzee. Oh, man, full house. Not too bad.